So Steve, it's um, our inaugural symposium today of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, we've had a great morning so far. Absolutely. So I'd be fascinated to know what's the most important thing or the most interesting thing that you learned today? Hmm. I'm not sure if it's uh, important but certainly interesting. I, I know uh, aside from the great strides that are being made in integrating medical data and the insights it's giving us into human health, uh, I think one of the most interesting things is, is where innovation comes from uh, and some of the things that are fueling much of the AI computation and enabling some of these discoveries came from the gaming world. Yep. And so for those of us that are parents that watch their kids uh, play Fortnite, yep. uh, those video cards and graphic cards that are tracking every one of those pixels uh, on the screen actually are enabling the parallel computing that are fueling the AI innovation. That's funny, you know, so that, that was something that surprised me as well, <laughs> you know, that it's actually the gamers who are driving you know, technology advancements and that's how it's led into the ability to get into artificial intelligence. Absolutely. Yeah. So very exciting times. So Tony, uh, so far this morning we've seen a lot of uh, really fascinating advancements yes. recently in AI. Where do you see AI in healthcare in the future, say 20 years from now? Uh, that's a tough question to answer because there's so many things going on. Um, but I, I would say the thing that uh, intrigued me the most this morning was talking about the ability of AI to enable physicians. Rather right. than replace physicians, it would be to help in diagnoses and then aid in what are the most effective treatments for individuals so that we see a lot more personalized medicine. I think that's where the excitement is to me. Yeah, I would agree. And actually, the, uh, the integration of additional types of data, you know, when I think in the future, I mean, now we track our steps, we track our heart rate, we track all of these things, but in the future, we'll be able to track our our blood sugar, our yep. lipid levels yep. with wearable devices and integrating all of that and, and really getting real-time uh, feedback. So Steve, moving away from some of the hype that we've talked about and mm -hmm. heard about today, thinking pragmatically, how is AI being used in clinical development to develop new drugs, new medicines for right. patients? Yeah, so, uh, I work in, in discovery where we're looking at trying to basically understand human disease biology to try to come up with the next best therapies. Uh, and technology has advanced uh, a great deal to, to generate tons and tons of data. So mm -hmm. we can sequence the genomes of millions of people, we can do imaging on cells and, and tissues, uh, uh, but, but making sense of all that data is the problem. And so the way we're using deep learning, machine learning, and AI, if you, if you want to call it artificial intelligence, is try to integrate that data and, and assess it in a way that comes up with generating hypotheses. Mm -hmm. But then as scientists, we can go back and test in the laboratories uh, to, to, to test those hypotheses. And that's happening now. But in the future I see, and in that too distant future, we'll be able to use some of these same techniques to help us actually design better molecules. Uh, molecules that will be more effective and, and safer uh, in people. And we're not quite there yet, but I certainly think that's the direction that we're going. So Tony, in your area with an AMV, uh, how do you see AI really impacting the way you do your work? It's a good question. You know, um, as you know, in, within within the HOR function, obviously we focus on health economics, but we also focus on outcomes research. That's the OR part mm -hmm. of the HOR, um, and that's becoming more important, more prevalent over time because we're seeing the impact of real world data these days, and so we can now start seeing how the drugs, or medicines, behave when they get into the real world, and I think. We've become very good at doing that with, with data from, from different sources. Uh, I think what AI is going to do is allow us to get much more specific and directed in the kind of research we can do, where we're talking about particular patient groups, how they're responding, you know, to be able to say, um, what's the most effective kind of treatments? What are the treatment patterns that are most effective? And, and the list goes on of all those different things you can do because it becomes almost infinite when you're thinking about real world data. But to your point, again, it comes down to um, getting that data in the first place. That's a critical component. So do you see a, a time when uh, AI or people's smartphone or will be helping doctors diagnose disease based on the data that underlies the patient? 
I think the answer to that is yes. <laughs> the simple answer to that, I think, is yes. It's it's yeah. difficult to predict, obviously, how 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 it'll it'll all play out. But I go back to the it's it's the data that we gather from patients or even you know non-patients, individuals in the real world. These masses of data that are going to be able to help us build predictive models. And it is these predictive models that can be then utilized to be able to identify patients at risk, to diagnose patients. Um, one of the things I found in the presentation this morning that was very interesting was this idea that we will be able to identify patients before they get sick. Right. And start thinking about that. Sure. Now it's getting very interesting because in theory you can treat a patient before they become a patient. Mm -hmm. And I think the other interesting uh, uh, talk this morning was about the synergies between human intelligence and artificial intelligence. And people talk about, you know, are, is AI going to replace my doctor? Well, the fact is, is highly unlikely, mm -hmm. uh, but it will do is provide the doctor with, with far more powerful tools yes. to do his job. Yes. And I'll go back to the, the example of, of the Fortnite and the kids sitting in front of the, in front of the computer screen. And I'd say they love the, they love the game, but get out from in front of the computer screen and look behind the screen. Behind the screen. What's, yeah. what's fueling yeah. it? And why does this work? And yeah. why is this so so fantastic? And uh, it's really about uh, staying curious uh, and really following your passion about the questions you want to ask. I would also say be willing to to, to think broadly. You know, I think when I was you know, as a kid, a lot of the things that are real now were science fiction back then. Exactly. And and I think it's being able to think that way and. and be able to get excited about the possibilities for the future. Uh, not necessarily sp specifically AI, but understanding that, that technology is going to change and so to keep an open mind and be excited about it and be willing to explore.